Hello, biologists. I am Heidi Hissrich, and today I'm going to show you how to extract DNA from fruit. And before you watch this video, you should print the handout. It's right underneath the video in the description of the video. So just click it and print it. If you don't have a printer, open up the document and you can type some notes directly into the document, stick it in your Google Drive. The supplies that you are gonna need for today's lab are supplies that people generally have right around the house. So you'll need some kind of a container. I'm just using a glass. You'll need a strainer or some cheesecloth, just the finest strainer sieve that you can find. Mine's a little wet. You will also need a piece of fruit. I'm using a frozen strawberry. You can use any fruit, uh, just a chunk of it is all you need. You could even use a vegetable um, or even a grain like some oats should work. All of those are living things. They all have DNA inside of them. So pick something that you have on hand. You'll need a plastic baggie, soap, it can be any kind of soap, and some isopurple alcohol or rubbing alcohol. And it's supposed to be ice cold if possible, so if you can stick it in the freezer for a while before doing this, do that, but I've had good luck even when I use it at room temperature. If you're doing this in the classroom, then it's best to do it in some kind of a tube, like a test tube. I like to use these screw top tubes and let my students take their DNA with them when they go. There's a little cap that goes on it. And I let my students keep their DNA from their strawberries. And also having a transfer pipette can be helpful if you're doing this version um, in the classroom. But if you're doing it at home, you probably don't have test tubes and pipettes and that is totally fine. So before we extract the DNA, it's important to understand the process of what we're doing. You could do this on your own cells just as easily, but it's very easy to do from fruit because you can just smash it up and you can't really do that with your own cells. So I like to start with fruit DNA. So all fruits are living and they have tissues. And these pictures represent these things. So I'm gonna draw a little arrow, that's my fruits. And then this is a picture of tissues. And you can see these little individual things inside the tissues. You might have already guessed what those are. They are cells. And this is a picture of a plant cell. So in a fruit, they have plant cells. They're a little different. They have cell walls. We don't. Um, but our cells are similar in many ways. And one of the ways in which they're similar is their cells have a nucleus inside of them, and so do human cells. So the nucleus in this picture is the little sphere inside of the cell. And inside of the nucleus, there are these things called chromosomes, which are often depicted like this. We have 46 chromosomes in most of our cells, and fruits have varying numbers of chromosomes. And what are chromosomes made of? They are made of DNA. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we are gonna get out this. And there's a multi-step process in order to do this. I'm gonna explain each step and then show you each step. And I'm also gonna explain what's happening each step of the way. So the first thing that we're going to do is add soap and water to the fruit in a baggie oops and squish and mix it you might notice i didn't put specific amounts and that's because the amounts aren't super important so a drop of soap is fine it can be a smaller drop or a bigger drop yeah i did kind of a big drop i like to add water how much water maybe as much water as you have fruit or slightly more. A few tablespoons of water. It's really not that important how much. And then smash it. Now my strawberry is fairly frozen, so I'm gonna have a little bit of a hard time. Luckily the water was pretty warm, so that's helping. But the idea here is that we are trying to break down this tissue. So as I told you, fruit is made of tissues. What I'm squishing, these are all the tissues and every bit of this is made of cells. And I'm trying to break apart those cells as best I can. And once I break apart the cells, I am actually also trying to break open the cell walls. 
So if you think about why we wash our hands, we wash our hands particularly to destroy things like bacteria that might be on the surface and like cell and like plant cells which have walls, bacteria cells have walls and soap is really good at breaking down cell walls. When you break down the cell walls of a bacteria, it dies. It would be like breaking our skin open all up and down our body. It would kill us. And when you um, add soap to plant cells, it also breaks them open. So when you look at this picture, hopefully now you understand what's happening. The soap is breaking open the cell walls, but it's also breaking open the nuclear membrane. And the nuclear membrane is like the sac around the nucleus. The nucleus is kind of like a balloon. And if you pop the balloon, inside are the chromosomes. So we're gonna let the chromosomes out. Those chromosomes are now free floating. We also, had to break apart the cells from the tissue first. So we could have done that with or without the soap just by physically squishing the contents. We broke that down, but then the soap coming into contact with all those cells is ripping the cells open, and now those chromosomes are free-floating in this fluid. The more you mix it, the better. Okay, the next step is to pass the soapy, chunky mixture through a sieve or cheesecloth. Cheesecloth is really nice if you happen to have it around, but um, since it's not like 1805, I don't really keep it at my house because I don't make cheese. And a sieve will work just fine. But if you're in the classroom, you're probably able to use cheesecloth. This can be a little bit messy. You're probably gonna get a little bit on your fingers. If you're using cheesecloth, it's good to let it dip down in your cup like this. Put it in, let it dip down, and then use a rubber band to secure it to the glass. Or the beaker, you're probably using a beaker if you're in a science classroom. You can use your fingers to try to press some of the liquid through there, make sure you get all the liquid out. Sometimes students like to do that, um, but that's also plenty of liquid, what I already have in there. So if you look, you can probably guess what we were trying to do there. We were just trying to remove the solids and leave the liquid behind. So now uh, a lot of the cell components are in the solid part. And what's left down in this liquid is a mixture of the chromosomes and some soap and some water. So we wanna leave the liquid with what we care about is the chromosomes. There's soap in there and there's water in there, but that's not what we're worried about right now. That's not what we're trying to work on. Now the next step does work best if you have something more tube-like. So the, the narrowest container you can find is great. Test tubes are awesome. But if you don't have that, it also works perfectly fine to do a glass. So the next step is we are gonna layer alcohol on top of our liquid solution. Layer alcohol on top of fruit juice. Speaking of which, I bet you could use straight up fruit juice and get this to work. You just have to mix some soap in, shake it up. Ooh, that'd be cool. Somebody try that and let me know how it turns out. And what's gonna happen is the alcohol will pull the DNA out of the solution. It'll pull it up so we can see it and it will be floating up in the alcohol layer. Now first, I wanna transfer part of my strawberry DNA to a test tube. So if you're in the classroom, what I usually do is have a team of students smash up a strawberry together, and then each student gets a pipette full of the strawberry juice. Okay, we'll leave the rest down in here, and then we have to gently add the layer of alcohol. 
So if you're doing this at home, what I suggest is just trying to turn your glass, angle it as best you can, because you wanna pour this in very gently and have it form a layer. You don't want it to disrupt the surface. Do sort of a slow pour. You can see it's layering on top of the strawberry juice. People always ask how much alcohol. I like to add at least as much alcohol as I have juice, sometimes more. Then we let that sit for a moment. And if you're doing it in the classroom into a test tube, I like to use a pipette, just a plastic transfer pipette. Again, angle it and let the alcohol run down the side of the tube. Now once you have done that, here's what to look for. Okay, look for those bubbles forming. Everywhere that you see bubbles forming, it's getting a little bit white. That's actually the DNA. There are little bubbles forming all over the surface of the DNA. I don't know exactly why that happens. I have not researched that, but I do know that that's the telltale sign that it is pulling up the DNA. Okay, if you look in the tube, you can see these air bubbles suspended. That is the DNA starting to come up out of solution. You wanna be patient, wait at least five or 10 minutes you see that beautiful string of DNA floating there? That's what you're going for. The longer you wait, the more DNA you will likely see form in this tube. Just for perspective, here's one I did about an hour ago. And look at these massive quantities of DNA. So this is what DNA looks like. It is white and stringy. And all of this in here is made up of A's, C's, G's, and T's. You can take a little bit of this and put it in a micro centrifuge tube or something else and wear it as a necklace. You can, if you're doing this in class, keep your little test tube. You don't want to jostle it though, because if you do, you're going to disrupt it if you shake it up and you'll lose the DNA. It'll go back into solution. But you can always make more. It's so easy. You could make it every day if you wanted to. Thank you for watching. I hope you were able to extract your own DNA from your fruit and had a great success. If you have not already tried origami DNA, that's a great activity to do before or after this. And I have a video on how to do origami DNA as well. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.